Hello everyone, you guys better stay tuned because we're going to be discussing the notion of audience. Let's get to it! When we hear the word audience, we usually think of a group of people at an event. It could be at a theater play, an assembly, or even the audience at a baseball game. But what does audience mean in media information literacy? Well, in media information literacy, it is defined as the people who receive the information and consume the media. For example, I could be scrolling through Facebook and I'd be seeing multiple posts about COVID-19. I would then be receiving the information and that would make me an audience. You guys, our viewers watching this vlog right now, are considered an audience because you are consuming this type of media which is our vlog and receiving the information we are putting out. Did you know that the audience plays a big part in media? That is because without an audience, there would be no media. The audience usually plays a big part in the success rate of the media being produced. That is why a lot of companies do audience research. They try to find out what the audience would like to see, what are the age range of the audience, so that they can cater to them more and be more successful. Similarities and art differences as the basis by which media producers construct their audiences. Why are there similarities and differences in audiences? It is because audiences could have the same lifestyle, upbringing, gender, age, or education, but they could still have different meaning to the media presented to them. Because we all have different perspective on everything. The second reason is, our similarities are important to fully understand how media and information creators construct the category of audiences. They target specific segment of the population with shared life characteristics to influence their opinions. How does media producers construct their audiences? The media industry is highly competitive and all media are created with target audiences in mind. This makes media producers use audience research and analysis to find out as much as possible about their target audience and to use that research to ensure their production or media will appeal to them. Media producers pick their target audiences by the audience's demographic such as age, gender, income, education, and occupation. Why does audiences vary by its different types of media? There are different engagements or interactions to the media given to the audiences. An audience may be any group of people exposed to media. Some audiences, such as those for sports events or concerts, are physically present in the media event. Other audiences, such as those for novels, televisions, or radios, are not. That's why audiences may vary by different types of media. That's all. Thank you. Different media, different audiences. There are differences between these two areas which can be level of activity and engagement with media and information, level of interaction with fellow audiences, location and space occupied, amount of time devoted to watching or viewing, and lastly is accessibility and proximity. We can take the example of an audiences in a known time show can come together to engage within a specific form of entertainment. It could be singing with, with each other, partaking in events in the said show, or basically engaging with, uh, with each other, whether it be talking to each other. Audiences of the TV can engage, but in a limited way. There are some noontime shows that can let the audiences partake by voting in their telephones, which some telecommunication companies have actually created to let the audiences engage more in the noontime show. Space and location have a difference with the behavior of the said audience. In a domestic setting which can be your home, the audience can feel relaxed and can get interrupted by many things. 
Would it be a household chore or anything that else that might interrupt the said audience? Would it be a visitor or something else? People in the setting can also share opinions together while watching the said media in the TV screen. You could be sharing your opinions with your uh, visitors, with your friends, or even with your parents. However, the audience in a cinema have a different behavior as they remain seated and prob- probably quiet at the theater. They can share opinions with each other but they have to be discreet about it as it might disturb the audience in the said theater. The notion of a public is attached to the idea of an audience. We can imagine this as uh, the people in a space like those seen in like in time shows, sports events, or even in a speech if you would consider that as an audience. We can also imagine it as a group of people watching something in a cinema or movie theater or even just a small family watching the media in their television screen or tablets can be considered to be imagined as a part of the audience. This kind of gathering of people is basically what creates visualizations that the media creators, producers, or even directors need to create a target audience for their specific media. This audience can be directed to the specific kind of media that they create. Let's say for example, a print advertisement for any product that they want is to play is displaced on let's say in a major venue or a big place like a mall that an individual at the said venue or place or any or even any passersby can be its target audience that is basically how they create their sense of audience their target audience to be exact hey so now we'll be talking about the typology of the audience so as we all know, the public is conveniently attached to the idea of audience. And how do we imagine the audience? Now, they are often imagined as a group of people migrating or gathering in one case, as in the case of, let's say, a live show or a sports event. A smaller group of audience is going to the cinema, or even a smaller group is a family watching a live show at the comfort of their homes. This is one of the visualization or interpretation that enters the mind of media creators and producers as they build a target audience. They are also aware that the audience can be disintegrated to the direction of a very specific characteristic and they are also aware of their content or product is not eye-catching enough nor entertaining enough for the audience. And, and the audience will just look for some, simply something else to entertain. And this is how McQuail uh, proposed a typology for the audience. This is how he uh, represents the word audience. And it is classified into four types. So first we have is the audience as the people assembled. Uh, it is the one paying attention to a media performed before them. The aggregate of spectators measured paying attention to a certain media presentation or product at the same time. An example of this would be, let's say, uh, you know, the latest iPhone or Samsung reveal. There's a huge audience audience just waiting for a creator. Uh, And they're just spectating for a product to be shown before them. Secondly, we have the people addressed. So this is referred to a group of people who were imagined by the communicator in the creation uh, and dissemination of the text. The so-called address uh, audience refers to the actual or real-life people who read a discourse, while the invoke audience is just referred to the audience called up or imagined by the writer. So this is just where the writer targets a specific audience to advertise its product. This product may not be meant for all, but just for that specific demographic. And thirdly, we have the audience that is happening. Uh, This could be the one reception alone or with others as an sort of interactive event. Like let us say addressing the President of the Philippines where the 
president gets to interact with its subordinates in dealing with the problems of the country. As you can see, the the audience or the subordinates are the one interacting with the president there. And lastly, what we have is the audience as hearing or audition. This uh, refers to a participatory audience experience, a high degree engagement like a lecture hall or let's say our online class where the student is participating with the professor or the teacher's lecture lecture and or a live reality TV show where the audience is participation is embedded in the show. Remember dear viewers that it also depends on what interest a person or entity holds. The media conglomerates see audiences as consumers of commodities they peddle. Other technological innovations such as the tele television remotes, a media box, or Netflix takes us away from the idea that the audience is passive, as, a video, the, as the viewer can just hop from one channel to another or one show to another show. And if the interest level is not sustained, it makes it possible for the viewer to watch uh, multiple shows that are airing simultaneously. While these typologies certainly divide the audience from others, they do not refer to the characteristic of the audience, as the concept of audience can be considered shifty a bit. Not one interest of a person may interest all. And that will be all for my topic. Now you'll be moving to mass media. Segmenting audiences tailor the content to a specific segment of society, thus improving the quality of the content that will most likely be relevant and appropriate to the needs and desire of the target audiences. When it speaks to them, they are more likely to be re reached and more likely to patronize the product. A number of factors make audience segmentation more possible in the age of digital technology that made publishing and production much faster and accessible. Second, the advertising industry privileges audience segment because it makes mess messaging and content creation more specific. Lastly, sophisticated mechan mechanism for audiences reach in and building database of audiences segments have enabled more target more target targeted content creation that is solidly 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 backed up by scientists and research mcwell 2010 notes that as the mid as the media have become bigger business the term market has gained its currency it can designate regions served by media, social demo demographic categories, or the actual or potential consumer of particular media services or products. It may be defined as an uh, aggregate of actual or potential consumer of media. Thus, McQuill 2010 sees, it, um, sees this is a pragmatic and necessary one for the media industries to the treat audiences as set of consumers aggregated according to characteristics rather than treating them as an unfortunate public. Thus continues McQuell the relationship between media creator and product and producers and the audiences become calculative rather than a norm or social relationship as a cash transaction between producer and consumer rather than a com communication relationship. And now, if you go back to chapter 1, it is quite an evident where the idea of mass audiences came from. The invasion of photography, film, radio, and television. These phenomena allowed works of entertainment and information that might have been restricted for just a few people to be experienced in the settings like gallery or a public theater and allowed that it be transmitted to a huge number of people in different parts of the world. Affordabil affordability comes to be an important factor as economics of scale allowed the 
production of these technological gadgets in huge number in huge numbers thereby reducing the costs That'll be it everyone for the video. I hope you have learned something. Kindly remember this is the charity channel of Pies of Gurun Vlogger Nong Kuwait. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell for you to be updated if there are new videos coming up. God bless everyone and keep safe always. Bye. See you in the next one.